Greetings, mortals. Stonemont Gamer here with the Mortal Realms, coming to you with another kind of deep dive into um, one of the pre previews that uh, Games Workshop uh, shared on the Warhammer community site yesterday. And today I wanted to talk a bit more about uh, the Endless Spells. Now this is a fantastic, just exciting new element to Age of Sigmar 2.0. Um, and with 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 these spells, what's uh, what we kind of know about it so far, digging into the lore a little bit, is that uh, Nagash's big necroquake has disrupted the Mortal realms, realms in such a way that spells uh, are acting kind of weird. Instead of uh, being cast and then going away, they're sticking around, and you know, whole uh, you know um, spells are just roaming everywhere. Um, there's whole groups of people. Uh, that are, uh, you know, their role is to go out and, and hunt these down and dispel them before they do more damage, etc. And we're going to be able to add these to the to our games of Age of Sigmar. And this was one of the first shots that we saw of these endless spells, this idea of this giant maw um, chomping through, uh, through Gur. Um, and, you know, what we got from our, the preview yesterday is a preview of the Malign Sorcery box set that has... 13 spell models in it and these are spells that anybody can use any army can use these you can cast these and so you're kind of getting this arsenal that you're ready to cast and use in any combination that you you want to uh, and some of them are going to be able to work together so you might cast a spell to put uh, one spell on the table and then use that to buff another spell an endless spell that you put on the table uh, and the the premise though is is that at the beginning before the turn um uh, before the, the, the battle round, um, you and your opponent are going to be able to, uh, even if you've cast a spell, your opponent is going to be able to uh, have an opportunity to control that spell. Um, uh, you know, So it could come back and backfire at you because these spells are, are just big and crazy. And so um, let's, let's get into it. And we can see right here uh, what the Malign Sorcery box is going to look like. Um, and it has its own booklet in it. And it has to describe how these these spells work. I'm sure maybe some campaign or mini games and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, um, one of the the things, well, I'll, I'll talk about that in in another episode. But some some things that are looking at being a part of this uh, book um, that have to relate to skirmish and path to glory. And we'll talk try and get a little more in depth in another video but here I just want to talk about the spells and look at these 13 spells off to the right hand side um, you have various sizes shapes um, different uh, some of them are going to be damage spells some of them are going to be uh, buffing spells defensive spells etc um, and uh, you can even see down the lower left hand corner that uh, that you have cards so I'm, I'm expecting that each spell is going to have its own card to put down and that'll be included in the set so more things that are just going to help um, your table. And you can see some different, you can see some flames, you can see some spectral things, some magical things. You've got um, crystalline things, chain things, a purple sun. You've got a scythe. Um, I really like the cog um, design there. And so uh, what I was able to do is I went and um, in this article, they tell you what each of these spells is called and kind of a sense of it. But over the past month, we've gotten little um, previews of, of some of these spells and what they actually do. Um, and in a couple of cases, we got full War Scrolls. Um, so I'm going to share those with you kind of in the order that they presented them, uh, you know, 1 through 13. So our first spell is the Purple Sun of Shyish. Um, now, in uh, uh, the last edition of, of Warhammer, it was the Purple Sun of Xerxes, I believe. But this is of Shyish, and Shyish is the realm of death. And it says it's an angry, uh, hungry ball of death magic with the power to slay units with a touch. Now, you get the War Scroll down below, and I don't have the War Scroll for every single one of these yet, uh, but uh, those will be available uh, with, the, with the box. Um, but you can see that the first thing it talks about is that the it's a predatory spell, so it's not just a stationary spell. And the Purple Sun of Shyish is a predatory spell that moves up to 9 inches and can fly. Swirling Death ability gives it um, the player who can set it, who sets it up, uh, is able to make a move with it. Um, the End gives Form ability uh, means that any unit that it passes across um, or that is within one inch of the at the end of its move uh, suffers on a, for each six up one model uh, in that unit is slain. Um, 
Oh, roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in that unit on a six up there slain. And then uh, Visage of Xerxes. So there's um, uh, Xerxes. Maybe it's a little bit different. Subtract one from the bravery characteristic of all units while they're within six inches of this model. And then lastly, Empowered by Shyish. If your battle is taking place in the realm of death, this model can move 12 inches instead of 9 inches. So this is where knowing what realm you're, you're uh, playing in will affect these rules. And I expect that to be kind of just a roll off. Um, either there'll be a chart, there's um, uh, eight, um, eight or seven realms that you could be rolling in. So you got six plus one maybe. Um, and then, uh, um, yeah, you're rolling off from there. And you may even have artifacts where your army is themed from Shaiish. Uh, I have at least two armies that are themed in Shaiish, three armies uh, that are themed in Shaiish. Two of them um, are kind of the more uh, dark and, and Nagash theme, and a third that's more of the endless desert. But uh, so some things to play with. All right, why don't we move on? The one that we saw initially, the Ravenox Gnashing Jaws. Uh, this is a spell from Gur that chews through foes with terrifying effectiveness. And here we just got a little bit of a preview. Again, it's a movement. Um, it could be nine inch move again, like the um, the the purple sc uh, skull of uh, Shyish. But uh, and it's, uh, any model uh, that it passes over suffers D three mortal wounds, uh, or any unit or if it ends within one inches of it and it subtracts one from the bravery characteristic. So very similar. So I'm, I'm curious on what's, what the difference between Ravening Hunger and uh, the uh, Purple Sun is going to be. So uh, we'll be moving on uh, to number three, the Prismatic Palisade, a wall of crystal from Hayish that shields anyone behind it from shooting. Um, so I remember, I think we saw a preview of this in one of the articles. I couldn't find a... You know, one of those those uh, text blocks that show exactly what it does. Um, but what I'm I'm really excited about with this is the ability to summon in a piece of terrain that can block line of sight, or in this case, it doesn't block line of sight, but it get, probably gives a, a negative uh, modifier to shooting or gives a bonus to save or something to that effect, um, which is really cool, um, especially given the change to um, some of our saving throws uh, or uh, Mystic Shield, where it's just re-rolling ones. Um, having some more defensive things that kind of get in the way or create, my fit. one of my favorite things is creating choke points. So if you can create one of these and it's stuck in place, um, you could create kind of a difficulty for to, to get the charge off, um, uh, which I'm, I'm really excited to, to, to use. Um, but uh, yeah, so here's kind of a, yeah, a blockade. Um, next, we got the Aether Void Pendulum. This is a really cool uh, model, and they even, you know, are able to get the sense of this thing swinging. Uh, it looks like one of those dungeon traps that's going to swing by, and you got to jump past it. But after this model is moved, each unit that has a model uh, it passed across, and each other unit uh, that is within one inches at the end suffers D6 mortal wounds. So this uh, again, it's, it doesn't cause bravery, but it's similar to the other um, predatory spells. That movement uh, has a negative. I'm wondering what else uh, is this going to cause? Um, could it cause additional damage? Um, you know, on the alternating um, round as well. Like maybe you don't need to activate it for it to cause more uh, damage. Um, and we got the suffocating grave tide, the rolling wave of souls that crush all who fall beneath it. It's kind of like the graveyard is actually. Uh, turned into a wave of souls. After this model has moved, each unit that has passed over suffers D3 more wounds, subtract one from the bravery. So this one's, again, very similar. Um, but what is this going to do? The size and shape of this is quite different. Um, uh, and is it going to um, have any buffs, or, you know, in something that it does uniquely in Shyish than in other places? All right, here's another one where we have the full uh, war scroll. The Umbral Spell Portal uh, summons a two-way portal that lets you vastly extend the range of your spells. So, summon Umbral Spell Portal. Um, it has a casting value of 5, which is super uh, low. Um, if successfully cast, set up the first Umbral Spell Portal um, wholly within 12 inches of the caster, and then set up a second Umbral Spell Portal, spell portal wholly within 18 inches of the first. So that immediately gives you, um, you know, a potential of 30 inches of kind of getting that furthest one away. Um, then you got Arcane Passage. Uh, when looking upon the Umbral Spell Portal, those versed in magic see a shadowy reflection of what lies on the other side. 
Um, if a wizard successfully casts a spell while they are within one inch of an umbral spell portal um, model, the range and visibility of the spell can be measured from the other umbral spell portal uh, from the end of the spell. So let's say you cast it, um, you know, 12 inches uh, from you, uh, you put the other one 30 inches away, basically, movement phase, um, well, uh, you'd want to cast it and put set up one one inch away from you. Then the next one can be up to 18 inches. So you maybe put that in the middle of the board. And then um, when you go to cast, still in the hero phase, um, if you have another spell or if another, um, you could set the first one up by another wizard. And that wizard can then cast uh, starting at the 18 inch point and then beyond. So that's um, usually spells are around 18 inches. So that means a 36 inch uh, casting, which is pretty cool. If a predatory spell ends, uh, finishes a move within six inches of an umbral spell portal, remove it from the battlefield and set it up again anywhere within six inches of an umbral spell portal model from this endless spell. So now uh, you're going to have these predatory spells popping into these little kind of magical realm gates and popping out the other side. Uh, and that's going to be pretty chaotic trying to uh, move those around and throw them around. If your battle is taking place in the realm of shadow, the second umbral spell portal model can be set up anywhere on the battlefield instead of within 18 inches of the first. So in Shadow, this becomes uh, an even more uh, potent uh, spell, and I think that'll be a probably pretty popular choice for people wanting to play in. So really cool, a different kind of uh, uh, endless spell that has a different effect on the game. Uh, Malevolent Maelstrom. I don't know much about this one. I couldn't find uh, the, if there is um, more rules or uh, information on this that's been in some of the faction focus or whatever. Please let me know in the comments below. This is an orb of energy that unbinds spells, devours them, and then it explodes dramatically. So I would imagine this thing's going around, grabbing up those endless um, spells, and you know, creating big shockwaves every time it hits into one. So this is a, a defensive and office, offensive spell if you've got that going on. So last ditch effort you've got something coming uh the ravenous maw coming at you uh you throw this spell out and it eats that one up but potential to do some damage to you uh the quick silver swords a mass of semi sentient blades that you can fling about at your opponent um some really cool things here i bet you there's there could be some defensiveness to this one you know um kind of like the fulminators um or the protectors meaning the paladins have kind of the ability with their swords to to you know create a negative one to hit this could do something similar like that, and that would be kind of cool, but it's also going to be uh, offensive, obviously, because it's swords and not shields. Next, we get the Burning Head, a massive flaming skull that makes everyone around it fight harder if it doesn't incinerate them first. So it's probably got a, a you know, damage D3 with any, anything it passes over, but it, uh, maybe it gives another round of attacks or plus one to attack um, or plus one to hit or that sort of thing. Um, could be really interesting, but it's, it's a really sweet... Um, model and uh, excited to see yeah kind of uh, how that's used um, I've got some ideas uh, for using that skull for maybe a, a giant conversion we'll see how that goes see if that pops up anywhere then we've got the Geminids of Ulgish so I think we've got kind of a, a mashup a portmandu of Olgu and Shyish uh, two-part endless spell that confounds anyone it crashes into with a deluge of magical effects so this could be, um, you know, how the realm gates, you're supposed to roll on them and they have uh, multiple uh, kind of effects for terrain. This could be something like that where there's a table that you're rolling on. Um, it could, uh, you know, do uh, befuddling or, you know, that sort of thing. Or it could uh, create some special rules. That's super interesting. Um, and it's cool to see, um, you know, Olgu and Shyish, or sorry, Hayish, um kind of represented that, that um, light and dark, light and shadow um, pairing represented in this spell. Next, I'm really excited for this one as I've uh, kind of begun a new empire army that is based in a cog city. Um, and this is Chronomatic Cogs, a set of mysterious devices that allow wizards to manipulate the flow of time. So there's two options here, and I'm sure there's many more. Um, and uh, this one could be a highish spell or, um, you know, something like that. Um, or, um, it could be a Shaman spell. So uh, two options, speed up time. Add two inches to the move characteristic of all units on the battlefield. Um, in addition, add two to the charge rolls for all units on the battlefield. Um, that is pretty crazy. So everyone's moving faster. 
um, good or ill. And you know, if you're using it in your um, your phase, if it gets set up, then then you know maybe you can use it, set it up, and then you know get the double turn, dispel it. I don't know um, how you would do it. Or it can slow down time. The wizard manipulating the cogs can cast one additional spell. So that means you could cast this one. You could cast then you know get another one out there. Um, uh, maybe it has some passive abilities, um, etc. And then in addition, reroll failed save rolls for that wizard. Rerolling saves is fantastic. And if you're a wizard with, uh, you know, um, a lookout sir and, um, you know, something like that, uh, that just gives you even more survivability as a, as a wizard trying to cast magic and not, um, not die. I wonder if when a wizard dies, the spells they cast uh, go away. Well, no, endless they're endless spells. That seems silly, but that would be the, the case. All right, next up we've got the Soul Snare Shackles. Mystical chains that latch onto the leg of anyone who tries to pass through them. Uh, so this is a really interesting, I'm sure, a great way to set up kind of a trap for anti-charging or for, um, you know, something to that effect or for a hero. Um, really interested to see how these guys get set up, if you could set them up around uh, enemies or, or what. So... Um, but again, really cool concept here. And uh, last but not least, the Emerald Life Swarm, a massive, a uh, massive insects made of pure life magic that heals units and even resurrects the dead. Um, so uh, here's a case where uh, using an endless um, spell, uh, any seems to me that any um, uh, army faction, regardless of whether they have summoning as part of their core mechanics, uh, could use this to bring something back to life or heal wounds, etc. So I think that there's, especially if you're themed in the realm of life, if you're um, from uh, um, Garan, um, or if you're fighting in Garan, this would be a really cool one to be able to pull out and theme with your army. Um, all right, so that's the preview uh, that we've got so far of the endless spells. Um, obviously, this, uh, this box set looks really cool. Um, and it's going to come with some extra things. There's some, uh, they made some hints at, again, some skirmish things and Path to Glory things that are um, included in the Malign Sorcery. And I'll talk about that in another video because, um, you know, the, the skirmish is something that I'm a really big fan of. Um, if you haven't checked out my um, uh, Renown or Ruin rule set campaign uh, role playing um, expansion for Age of Sigmar Warhammer uh, Skirmish. Definitely go check that out. I'll have a uh, link in below. Go check out the, the Warhammer community article. Uh, and I'm sure um, the Stormcast podcast will have something in the coming days to, to show more about these, maybe an unboxing or something. Um, if you like the video, please uh, hit the like button. If you want to uh, be updated when I come out with videos um, on kind of skirmish, on General's Handbook 2018, some of the other previews that we got to see, please uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell if you want to be notified. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Adios, mortals.